Mind your hand. I would like to share with you a short exchange between a human factors specialist and a pilot. The aim of this exchange is to better understand and manage the confusion between the cockpit controls in operations. Let's begin with a short video. Manflex 66 SRS runway auto thrust blue. Checked. Thrust set. One hundred knots. Check. Rotate. Airbus A380 passing 2000 feet, proceed direct to Amolo. Passing 2000 uh, direct Amolo, uh, Airbus uh, 380. Positive climb. Gear up. Flaps 1. Gear up. Flaps 2. Gear up. I am sure you have made some mistakes when using cockpit controls. You used a cockpit control when your intention was to use another. This is what we call cockpit control confusion. You decide to perform an action and you are really sure that you have selected the correct control, but no. Instead, you have inadvertently selected an erroneous control and you may even fail to detect your error. Reports received by aircraft manufacturers indicate that these incidents happen regularly. How can we explain this? We are talking about controls that you use frequently in your daily operations. It is strange and we are sure that this is not related to training. So it must be something else. The aim of this Airbus win is to highlight what causes these errors. Because when we become aware of what causes errors, we may be able to prevent some of them. We also want to share with you some of the best practices to reduce errors that are now available in the Airbus Flight Crew Training Manual. OK, I understand what you mean. Let's see some examples. First, to set the parking brake instead of the engine master lever. Second, to retract the flaps instead of the landing gear. Third, to extend the flaps instead of the speed brake. Remember to mind your hand. This list does not include all possible errors. Our aim is to point out some of them. What happened to my hand? What happened in my head to create this confusion? For human factors, this is not a surprise. Remember that the human capacities are naturally powerful, but they are optimized by expertise. However, sometimes this optimization falls into traps. The trap of the habits, the trap of distraction, the trap of fatigue. I'm sure this has happened to you before. So why do these confusions occur? The controls that are most affected by confusion are usually the most frequently used. The handling of these controls is part of your routine. A routine is a well-known sequence of actions or a well-known scanning pattern. Training and regular use build up a routine. This is what we call human automatism. You enter into autopilot mode. Most of the time this is positive. Human automatism is a very powerful tool for cognitive resource saving. For example, you drive and at the same time talk with someone in your car. Human automatism is the reason why you're able to perform actions without thinking about the how to do them. You are a professional. 
You know the cockpit inside out. Exactly. Pay attention. The strength of the habits may become a trap. Try to imagine the following situations. Your hands and your mind are disconnected. You are distracted or thinking about your last conversation with a colleague, but your hand is in armed mode somewhere in the cockpit. Or your hand and your mind are at the starting point and they are ready to go. Because your mind is almost sure of what your next action will be, a small cue can become a trigger for that action. Habits make you expect a certain action. Why? Because your experience determined that 99% of the time this action occurs at this moment. What is similar between these two situations? The lack of conscious control over the actions according to James' reason. And oops, too late, your action was triggered. Who is James' reason? He is a famous cognitive psychologist specialized in human error. Reason described a type of error called action slip error. This type of error occurs when human intention is correct, but the way to perform the action is not. As a pilot, it is very important to mind your hand before your actions. The FCTM describes the best practices to ensure that your actions take into account a more conscious control. Now let's look at why this error can occur in operations. Remember that the main responsible factor is to act without conscious control over your actions. This means that your hand is performing an action without any checks or control. There are four main facilitators of the cockpit control confusion. Let's talk about the first facilitator of cockpit control confusion. Just before you perform an action, your hand is resting on a control. What do you think are the controls that are used more often to rest the hand? I will give you 5 seconds to select the correct answers. The pilots usually rest their hand on the flap sliver or on the parking brake handle. Pay attention to this. Mind your hand. As a best practice, do not use the cockpit controls to rest your arm or your hand. Use the arm rest for that. Now, let's look at the second facilitator of confusion. You are in arm mode and ready to go. You are waiting for the next action. Your hand is already in position and the smallest cue triggers the action. But one day, the sequence of actions for the same procedures may change when you do not expect it. And this is a trap for the human automatism that is valid in most situations. Pay attention, mind your hand. During approach, the pilot flying considers that the deceleration is too slow and wants to extend the landing gear to reduce the speed of the aircraft. Act checked. Lots of star checked. Go on altitude 4000 set checked. Gear down. Speed checked. Flaps. Negative non standard gear down. Gear down. Speed managed. Checked. Light slow. Checked. A good example of this is when you use the flap sliver instead of the landing gear. You, as pilot monitoring, expect to extend the flaps too and you anticipate your next action by putting your hand on the flap sliver. And bingo! When the pilot flying requests gear down, you move the flap sliver. As best practice, to avoid inadvertent activation, 
the pilot monitoring should not have their hand on a control before they need to use it. In the following video, we will illustrate one way to mitigate this. The pilot monitoring expects to extend the flaps too and he anticipates his next action by putting his hand on the flaps lever. To share his new action plan, the pilot flying may say, non-standard, gear down. Speed at start. Checked. Non-standard, gear down. Gear down. Speed managed. Lots of star. Checked. Go on altitude 4000 set. Checked. Flaps 2. Speed checked. Flaps 2. Glide slope. Checked. Another best practice is to confirm that you and your fellow crew member share the same plan of actions before you ask them to perform an action. What do you think is the third facilitator of confusion? It is when you act blindly. That means you perform an action without checking if you have selected the correct control. Why? First reason, your mind is focused on a display or you are looking outside. This requires most of your conscious control resources. When you handle a dynamic phase, you need to pay attention to various information. The more resources you dedicate to monitoring, the less you can dedicate to checking if you are using the correct control. Second reason, your mind is distracted or your mind is traveling. As a result, you select a control that is not correct. Another possible reason is that you are sure that you know your cockpit controls and their location very well. Pay attention, mind your hand. As best practice, visually identify the control before you select it or before you perform any action on it. Then, to be sure, check the result of your action. The fourth facilitator of confusion is when the control is more accessible from your seat. You may grasp the control that is closer to you instead of the correct one. If you are the captain on A320, you are closer to the speed brakes. If you are the first officer on A320, you are closer to the flap sliver. Pay attention, mind your hand. Let's consider a typical example. During a flight, the first officer briefly moves the flap sliver to flaps position 1 at flight level 280 instead of selecting the speed brakes. As best practice, again, visually identify the control before you select it or before you perform any action on it. Then, to be sure, check the result of your action. Why is it difficult, if not even impossible, to stop the use of the erroneous control? In operations, there are several reports of cockpit control confusion. Confusion that affects controls with different shapes, different sizes and in different locations. But why? Using a cockpit control is a human automatism that is the result of repetition. When you touch a control that you know very well, you automatically recognize it and, in an unconscious way, you know how to use it. So your hand automatically applies the action associated to the control without a conscious use of your brain. And when the action is initiated, you cannot stop it. The sequence is automatic and rapidly performed. Alexandre, I imagine that sometimes the cockpit control confusion may affect the flight. Can you give me some examples? The cockpit control confusion may have an important impact. Let's look at specific outcomes observed in some of the occurrences. During pushback, the pilot flying expected to set the engine master on, but he set the parking brake on instead. The result was a sudden aircraft stop and a collision with the tow truck. Another example. 
After takeoff, the pilot flying requested the retraction of the landing gear. But the pilot monitoring retracted the flaps. This resulted in a low energy state near the ground and it triggered the alpha lock function. One more. During descent, the pilot flying wanted to extend the speed brakes. But they extended the flaps instead. It resulted in an exceeded VFE and the activation of the overspeed oral alert. Our last example occurred during approach. The pilot flying wanted to arm the approach mode. They pressed the expedite push button instead of the approach push button. It resulted in an unexpected descent rate. Then the pilot attempted to rapidly recover and pressed the auto stress push button by mistake. The key point is that a cockpit control confusion may have severe operational effects, may startle the pilots because of an aircraft behavior that they were not expecting, may result in the crew attempting to recover too fast, causing even more errors. So, mind your hand. Let's make a summary. The cockpit control confusion affects the most frequently used controls. It may happen when you act without conscious control, and it is more probable when your hand rests on a control, you are busy or distracted, and you act blindly. You have prepared your next expected action as usual. The control is more accessible from your seat. These confusions may have operational effects, and even an undesired aircraft state. As mitigation, here are the recommended best practices available in the FCTM. We hope that you enjoyed this briefing. And we will see you around for the next one.